Uh, should we leave you alone with your imagination? Mm-hmm. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's on the go? All right. So winter is here. It is. Is it, is it the winter of our discontent? Yes. <laughs> Go okay. on, it's 2020. <laughs> this, yeah, it's been a year of discontent. Yeah, well, because it's winter, all sorts of Christmas things are coming out all from all directions. We've got Dash and Lily coming out today. It's uh, As we're filming, it's November 10th. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, ro- uh, a comedy romance about two characters. Yeah, big surprise. But they communicate with a book in a library, so it's kind of like this weird diary communication. So it's the notepad. Yeah. Or yeah. the notebook. Yeah, it's again. The, it's the notebook again, except it's a eight episodes running with 20 minutes each. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to watch it, but I didn't. But it... To my defense, it just came out a couple hours ago. So speaking of Christmas, I, I just thought of this. Uh, Jingle all the way was the uh, remember that movie that uh, Christmas movie Arnold Schwarzenegger searching for the toy. Oh, Re- remember that okay. one? I'm getting flashbacks. Yeah. Remember who was the uh, villain in that? It was Sinbad, and it's Sinbad's birthday today. He's 64 <laughs> today. Wow! Happy birthday, Sinbad. He's been in nothing since. I, I can't. I don't know. <laughs> Sinbad has been in, like, since Jingle All the Way in 1996. But, uh, yeah, apparently he's still around and kicking. Wow. Did Speaking of Sinbad, did you ever watch the movie Shazam? <laughs> that movie, <laughs> that's the movie that uh, a lot of people think it was Shaq. That, that a lot of people believe that Shaq was in a uh, genie movie. But, no, Sinbad was in a genie movie. No, it was actually the other way around. The other way around, yeah. It's a, it's a weird... Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah, I asked my father just the other day if he remembered that movie, and he vividly remembered the Sinbad movie, and he went into great detail about it. And when I revealed to him that he was wrong... It's it's, it's one of those Mandela effect <laughs> things. Yeah, you almost I believe stroke. that there's an alternate universe out there where Sinbad was <laughs> it was in a genie movie. Yeah, Sinbad, just make it. <laughs> just, just make it now. <laughs> um, yeah. Netflix has got quite a few shows coming out all the time, and uh, let me let me try that one again. Yeah, Netflix has got more than one show, though. Did you know that? They have more than one. Yeah. Okay. Have you heard of the show Ratchet? I have. I think that's uh, kind of a uh, you know, the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. They had Nurse Nurse Ratchet, so I think they've done a series on that. Yeah, they've done a series about Nurse Ratchet. It's got a seven point three on IMDb. And, uh, yeah, it's a series, and they've got another season coming out next year. So, you know, it's going to be continuing. Uh, yeah, it's got really great colors. The set design is great. The loca- the location is gorgeous. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's filmed somewhere in California. It's, um, eh. But you know what I don't like about it? Um... <coughs> But you know what I don't like about it? They take you on this ride where you don't really know what's going on until late in the episode. So you're sitting there making all these guesses. And it's just, for me, it was kind of uncomfortable. I think a lot of people really like how mysterious it makes the show. But, um, yeah, if you're in for, uh, if you want to go in for quite the ride, I definitely recommend Ratched. Well, here's, here's the question. Uh, Netflix is known for, like, canceling everything after two seasons, so we'll see what happens to see if it picks up a third. <laughs> we, you know what, though? I love the two-season format, so I just wish that Netflix was, was more self-aware, and I wish they would just give two-season contracts so we can actually see things wrap up. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. There's been a few series that have been kind of left on a... A cliffhanger, which has kind of made some people a little upset. Yeah, who knows? Maybe in 20 years, there'll, there'll be a new service where everything will be remade. And there'll, there'll be three, th- <laughs> they'll get three seasons before they get bottlenecked. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't get anybody's goat, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Um, did you know that in November in 1940, Walt Disney began some... 
Serving as an informer for the Los Angeles office of the FBI? Uh, yeah, I think there was uh, – he was kind of wrapped up in the whole uh, anti-communism thing like back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, I can't blame him. Um, and, but, and also in November the 3rd actually, PBS started. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a, a neat little factoid. But so, okay. I've got a question for you. Okay. We've, we're going to, well, actually, it's going to be, I'm going to participate in this too. We've got, I've got three movies here and oh. we're going to rank them uh, first, second, and third place. Okay. Okay? Um, okay. So we've got Sonic the Hedgehog, which had a meta score of 47. Okay. We've got Guns Akimbo. Have you heard of Guns Akimbo? I've heard of it. That's the uh, Harry Potter has two guns. Yeah. Okay. So okay. they well, they bolt two guns to Harry Potter's hands, and they make him run away with from people with rocket launchers and machine guns. It's, it's Daniel Radcliffe, by the way. It's not yeah. actually Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the actor. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Daniel Daniel Radcliffe's been in a lot of strange movies lately. He has. I mean, he's he's at that point in his career that like uh, he can do whatever he wants. I love it though. Yeah. Of all the people. From the Harry Potter series. He's doing the most interesting stuff, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, who can play a corpse better than Daniel Radcliffe? Uh, I've seen none better so far. <laughs> Not on purpose, at least. <laughs> um, and we've have you seen the new Scooby-Doo movie? I have not. Okay. So it's it's an animated feature about the mis- about Mystery Inc., except it's also a backstory. And they've also have they also have spaceships and superheroes. Okay, I think it's called Scoob. Right? It's called Scoob. Yeah, it's um, call me old fashioned, but it's so modern it's kind of cringy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did Scooby Doo need a backstory? <laughs> Where okay, like literally, um, somebody asks Scooby Doo what um. What the dog? Uh, sorry, they asked Shaggy what his dog's name is, first name is, and he's like Scoob. Well, what about his middle name? Uh, Doobie. <laughs> Last name? Doobie. Do. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's got a meta score of forty two. <laughs> so yeah, not uh, not doing that great, hey. Yeah, but Guns Akimbo's got a meta score of forty five. Okay. Okay, so if I had to pick, I would put Guns and Kimbo on top. I think for mere concept, you'd, you'd have to put that on top. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, with Scooby Doo or with Scoob on the bottom. Yeah, Sonic in the m- middle. Yeah, which is kind of weird. It's in the uncanny valley of, is this good or is it not good? Well, at least they went back and they they had that old controversy with Sonic's face where, oh, like, originally it looked, like, literally terrifying. I was afraid of it. Yeah, and then they brought it back to the more cartoony style, so. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, so more of the story here. If you had to watch, if you had to choose between three bad movies, definitely check out Guns Akimbo. You get to see Harry Potter with... Guns bolted to his hands. It sounds fantastic. Yeah. You know what else is fantastic? The Room. <laughs> it's fantastically terrible, but it's definitely worth watching. If you don't want to sit through the repetitive uh, scenes of The Room, I definitely recommend checking out the on YouTube The Guy with Glasses. He does he does a, a full uh, a full review on the movie. But the benefit of it is you get kind of an abridged version of the room. You don't actually have to watch the room. You don't act. You can you can watch it without watching it. I, I watch the. Uh, I think a good alternative as well is the Disaster Artist. That's my next point. I honestly, in my opinion, it was the best movie of 2017. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. But it's got um, it's got James Franco and his brother in it. And his brother did a really freaking good job. Yeah. Holy crap. But please don't watch The Disaster Artist until you at least watch the review by the guy with the glasses. But, you know, that's all I've got for you today. All right. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to Media Minute, your headlines in quick time. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about video games. What's going on in video games? Well, uh, the newest edition of the Assassin's Creed series has come out. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla from Ubisoft. It's come out for all major platforms. And, of course, it's the latest in the uh, Assassin's Creed franchise, which they've done a lot of. How many are there now? I I don't know. There has to be at least eight because there were, like, three different versions of Assassin's Creed (laughs) 2. I didn't realize that. Yeah, there were, like, three uh, different uh, add-on packs for it. And uh, this one, you get to build your own Viking legend as Evior, a Viking raider. Raised to be a fearless warrior. Okay. You get to journey from Norway to found a settlement and conquer 9th century England. You get to grow and customize your settlement, uh, lead epic raids, and of course you got all that uh, classic Assassin's Creed gameplay where you sneak around and perform assassinations. And apparently you get to engage in flight rig, which is apparently akin to uh, Viking Rap battles. I'm not sure how that works. And for some reason, I wrote wrote rap as W-R-A-P. So I'm not sure if it's about sandwiches or actually rapping. (laughs) But it's doing well. It's uh, 85 on Metacritic so far. That's a pretty good score from Metacritic. Do you know if there's going to be naval warfare again? Uh, There is. uh, I mean, you got the Viking longships. So I I think there might be some combat involved with that. Because Black Flag... It, is, conceptually, is, was yeah, my favorite. Yeah, it's still, still my favorite. Uh, next up, it's uh, Yakuza, Like a Dragon, for uh, PC, PS4, PS5, and uh, all the new Xboxes. You get to fill the shoes of a low-ranking Yakuza grunt who uh, just got out of jail. You got uh, open-world gameplay with uh, tons of side activities and minigames, including karaoke. Karaoke. <laughs> One thing that they've done differently this time is uh, they moved on to uh, turn-based combat. Yakuza kind of had a uh, – I always thought of it as like the Japanese version of uh, Grand Theft Auto. It was kind of huh. you're in the street punching and kicking and stuff. But they brought in turn-based combat for this one. You get to lead a ragtag group of outcasts and misfits as you ride through the ranks. 84, a Metacritic. So is it an RPG style? Yeah, it's an RPG style. Oh, that's cool. Do you get to pick your tattoos? I have no idea. Probably if it's oh. Yakuza, but uh, yeah, they have all sorts of wacky mending games and stuff like that. And uh, you get to assign each of your party members jobs. So, all right. Yeah, each of your attacks like is based on your job. So it's a pretty interesting looking one, and it's doing well. Like you said, eighty four on Metacritic. Next up, uh, Spider Man Miles Morales for uh, PS four and PS five from Insomniac Games. And, of course, the last year that Spider-Man game came out, I think it's called, like, Marvel Spider-Man or something like yeah. that. So this is a, a newer version of this. Uh, it's kind of like the same gameplay, but uh, you get to play as Miles Morales as he faces challenges while learning to be his very own Spider-Man. And it's a standalone adventure. And it's doing well. It's 85 a Metacritic. I, I think the original Spider-Man game did well as well, so... Yeah, there's been a lot of Spider-Man games at this point. Did you ever play the Spider-Man for the PlayStation 1? Uh, no, I haven't. Definitely worth checking out. Well, have you ever played Spider-Man for Atari? I haven't. <laughs> was there really a Spider-Man there for Atari? There was a Spider-Man for Atari. You what scaled did that up look a bill. Like? It, what it looked like it was a lot of blocks of different colors. But uh, yeah, you fought the Green Goblin in that one. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're actually going to move on to uh, a couple of uh, more independent games. Uh, the first one is a Zoo Adventure. I, hopefully I have that right. I think it's from a Polish developer. And uh, what we've been lacking is games where you get to play a dinosaur. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Well, this is You can a, ride dinosaurs in ARC. That's true. That's true. Well, this is a hand-drawn 90-style point-and-click adventure game. Uh, you get to play as new, a yellow dinosaur who is on a mission to find the ultimate gift for her mother's hatch day. And, of course, the, the charm about this one, it's uh, frame-by-frame animation, they have cartoon cutscenes. Like if you played an adventure game in the 90s, oh, yeah. yes, this is going to be very familiar to you. They also have an in-game encyclopedia of dinosaurs and items and more. Uh, there's actually no Metacritic score because, like I said, it's an indie game, but it's rated positive on Steam. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 here today. Just by the description of the dinosaur. Just by get, the... Being want, able to play a dinosaur is, is good. You get to play as a dinosaur and you get to read about dinosaurs. Yeah. And it's hand-drawn. It's dinoception. 9 out of 10. <laughs> Next up is Dude, Where's My Beer? 
And this is from Eric Zorabi, and hopefully I have that right. And uh, here's the description of this one. Can you find a normal beer in a world of flavored craft beers and solve the mystery of the missing Pilsner? That's, that's the description for the game. Again, <laughs> again this is an old style uh, adventure game. Um, you're, you're, you're blown away by the description for this. I feel like it's going to be a really difficult game. <laughs> well, it's an old style adventure game. Once again, uh, anyone familiar with like Monkey Island or the old uh, Lucas uh, Arts games? It's got that uh, Monkey Island style interface. You get to talk to hipsters and solve beer related puzzles. And it also includes a beer o meter where you keep track of your inebriation levels as you go through the game. Again, uh, it's an independent game, so there's no Metacritic store, but it is uh, positive on Steam. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it, I, you should look it up. Like, it's got a really neat looking art style. And uh, yeah, it, I think it delivers everything it promises. Oh, yeah. I think it'll, I know it'll deliver everything that I hope for. That one's uh, those last two games exclusively for PC, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah, I guess since I'm pretty sure the performance requirements couldn't be too much. Too much. No, uh, I think they're both like pretty good. Oh, good. Because I own a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jesse, what happens when you uh, combine the police, mm -hmm. not the band, they're just like ah, the police, and chicken? The police and chicken. Yeah. You get... Chicken police. <laughs> From The Wild Gentleman. It's coming out for PS4, uh, Switch, Xbox One, and a PC. You get to join former partners Sonny Featherland and Marty Mac Chicken as they take on a case in the uh, classic film noir style. It's an adventure visual novel, and it's, uh, it's almost like Bojack Horseman. It's like it's human bodies, and then like your main characters have chickens for heads. And so that's the concept of the game. You have a uh, complex uh, interrogation system, fully voiced characters. Uh, the the uh, trailer for this really shows that off. Uh, they have, like, excellent voiceover for this. And it's a narrative gameplay as you explore the city of Clawville. Okay. On a mystery. So, yeah. Chicken Police by the Wild Gentleman. And uh, this one is actually on Metacritic, and a lot of people liking it. It's 86. 86. Based on that description, I would say it's it deserves a 90. I think the only problem is you don't want to... Oof. Don't assume it's too easy... <laughs> I couldn't squeeze a cocky joke in there. I was no, really trying. No, the, the buck stops here, that's for sure. Now, uh, just to end things off, today is a big day in the console wars. The new Xboxes are dropping today, the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Mm. I looked online out of curiosity. No, you can't buy them anywhere. And, of course, the uh, PlayStation 5 is going to be dropping uh, this Friday. So it's a big week for the console wars. Oh, I just want that. PlayStation textured controller. Have you seen the close-ups? I haven't, no. It's, the texture is a bunch of, like, triangles, squares, circles, and Xs. Okay. Mm. <laughs> well, should we leave you alone with your imagination? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that <laughs> wraps things up for this edition of Media Minute. Uh, we're going to uh, let Jesse do whatever he's doing. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit that like button, and make sure you subscribe. See you next time.